right, hello everyone and welcome to opening day kickoff. Uh, my name is Tracy Haddock and Jelly. I am the director of the competition here at iGEM and I'm going to be walking you through uh, a few topics uh, at first and then we'll pass it along. Um, and so uh, as everyone can see this meeting is being recorded. Uh, so if anyone on your team is unable to join, we'll be posting the recording of this meeting online later. Uh, we'll also be capturing the chat. Uh, so if you folks uh, can ask questions in the chat as we go along, uh, my co-host Abigail, also from iGym headquarters, uh, is going to try to capture some of those questions. And if we miss any, we will post those questions and answers into the global Slack following uh, this meeting probably early next week on Monday or Tuesday. Um, so again, I am uh, located in Boston, Massachusetts in the United States, um, and it is early morning here for me, so I will be drinking coffee as we go. Uh, right, <clears throat> so this is today's schedule. Uh, hopefully everyone has seen this online already. Um, for my segments, I will be talking through the four, first four topics, and I'm actually going to be walking you all through some of the uh, pages on the website. Uh, so all of the information I will go over today will be available online on the website. Um, so there's not going to be any, you know, slides you have to worry about from my side. Um, I know some of the other groups will be talking um, and presenting some slides. We'll make all of that available to everyone following this, uh, this kickoff. So with that, I will get started on the welcome and overview. I'm just going to switch over tabs to the competition site. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit to make everything a little larger. And so welcome to the new competition site. Um, so for those of you who are brand new to iGEM this year, you will have not seen previous year's websites. For those of you who are returning, uh, the website does look quite different. Um, and so what I wanted to talk to you about first is really just go through some of the participa participation information I'm not gonna go through everything. Um, and the idea here is I'll go through some pieces of information and then we'll have some time for questions before I move to the next topic. Um, and so as I'm going through things, if you have questions, again, please type them in the chat uh, and we will get to you uh, and ask, and also during the questions period, if you wanna raise your hand and unmute yourself and actually ask the question aloud, that will also be totally fine. That'd be great. It would be wonderful to hear hear from people. Um, so we're going to start here uh, for participation, and this will launch um, the. There seems to be something on my screen. I'm not sure what that's all about. There we go. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> This is the introduction page to participation. Uh, and so I think the most important thing I really wanted to make sure to talk about with all of you today are some of the rules and policies and also different ways that you can connect with different folks within our community. So you have different ways to ask. Oh, sorry. Um, and so we definitely recommend all of you to take a look through this page. Um, and we can also just put the link right here in the chat as well. Um, <clears throat> and you know, we have, we'll be updating these pages as we go through the season. Um, and you'll be able to see, uh, you know, different information as we have new information available. If we're like, oh, hey, we have some new resources. We'll put them on this page. We'll also let you all know that through various notifications. Um, and so for rules and policies, there are quite a bit of rules and policies. Um, <clears throat> these are really important. I'm not going to go through absolutely every single one of them, but they are really important uh, that everyone on the team actually reads these rules and policies. It's really important that you also ask us questions if you're not sure uh, what these rules and policies may mean. If you're not, um, <clears throat> if you're confused by any of them, this is the, you know, de definitely pieces of information you want to ask for uh, clarity on. You want to ask us these questions. Um, so we have two major committees who overlook and help us with uh, describing rules and uh, upholding safety. And so we have safe, the safety and security committee. 
Um, and these are the folks who will be reviewing all of your safety forms. These are the folks who will answer all of your safety questions throughout the year. Um, and it's a really you know, fantastic group of experts that we have from around the world. And then we have the Responsible Conduct Committee and their job is to help us explore and understand if there might be some complaints or issues uh, within the community in regards to the rules of conduct. Um, so the rules of conduct, I'm not gonna read through absolutely everything, but I'm going to just quickly highlight them. There's not many. There is uphold iGEMS values. So just basically making sure that you are um, upholding integrity, good sportsmanship, respect, honesty, celebration, cooperation, effort, and excellence. Um, be intellectually honest. So you need to acknowledge any work that is not yours. You also need to be honest about the work that you have done. Um, <clears throat> treat everyone with respect. So again, treat everyone the way you would like to be treated is generally the way to think of that. And then consider cultural context. This is an international competition obviously. Uh, we generally have over 40 countries represented um, within the competition every year. And so as you're creating materials, you want to make sure that you're taking into consideration other cultural contexts and that you're, you know, trying not to offend people or upset people. Um, and again, if you're not sure, we have um, a whole bunch of folks involved with AGEM who can help answer your questions. So you can always ask various committees like the Human Practices Committee, you could talk to your ambassadors. Um, we have a whole lot of different resources where you can ask questions to kind of make sure that what you're working on um, is okay. We have safety rules and <clears throat> there are 11. These are again, really important. If you violate these safety rules, you can be disqualified from the competition. We don't want that to happen. We don't want anyone to be disqualified. Um, and so you really wanna make sure you read through these as a team, make sure you fully understand them. Uh, with safety, you have to ask permission before you carry out experiments that don't fall under the whitelist, that don't fall under um, things that are already, you know, openly accepted within the competition. And all of that information is here and you can just go through and click through different links. We have our first question, yes. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so make sure you take a look at this. We have another section uh, later today on safety. And so you'll be able to ask very specific safety questions there. Um, but if these are all really, really important, we don't want anyone to be disqualified. The number one reason um, that teams have been disqualified in recent years are animal use forms or doing experiments with animals without getting permission first. Um, even if you have permission from your university, you must have permission from the iGEM Safety and Security Committee. Um, and so make sure that you submit those forms and you know, ask your questions as early as possible in the process um, <clears throat> to avoid any uh, unpleasantness. We also have various policies for safety. Um, again, these are kind of more specific to experiments that you might be thinking about. Um, if you want to do um, work with animals, you want to think about how you can work with, you know, SARS-CoV-2, anything like that. Take a look through these, um, but these are definitely much more specific to the topics you may be exploring in your projects. We also have a set of communications policies. Um, and these have kind of developed over the years. And so this is for your website, this is for your team presentation, this is for your project promotion video, any sort of official communication piece of your project needs to follow these policies. And we also have our anti-harassment policy. Um, we strictly pro prohibit any kind of harassment. We list some here, but it's not um, it, you know, everything. There may be other forms of harassment that we may be missing. If we are, please let us know. We're happy to make this as a complete list as possible. Um, and then we do have some possible consequences. These are the unfortunate things that could happen. The worst being, you know, di being disqualified or not being allowed to participate in iGEM in the future. Um, most of the time we ask you to clean up or fix um, a problem if we notice it. <clears throat> okay, I want to make sure I leave some time for questions. Um, and the other, other uh, thing I wanted to point out real quick is connect. So we have various ways to connect with members of the community. 
Um, you can be able to contact your ambassadors. Uh, they'll be talking with you uh, later on in this opening day kickoff. We also have various pieces of social media that you can follow us on. And the global Slack is probably our most important communication tool uh, throughout the year where team members, you should have at least one person from every team on the global Slack, if not multiple, where you can ask questions, post collaborations, um, and you know, just generally connect with the global iGEM community. And so I will pause here and give a few minutes for questions. And I think we have, uh, I have one question here in the chat. Uh, can you explain if there are policies against the use of human saliva samples? That is considered something you need to uh, submit a check-in form for. That is, <clears throat> so if we go back to our rules and policies, scroll down. Where am I? Sorry, it's always taking pieces to find things. All right, so we have, um, you need to submit a, here it is, animal use form. Um, this includes the use of live or dead animals, animal samples, such as organs, tissues, blood, saliva, or other bodily fluids. You need to submit um, an animal use form for that, even if it, the animal is a human. Um, even if it is your own saliva or your teammate's saliva, you must check in uh, with the safety committee before you do any work. Um, I hope that answers the question I received. Um, are there other questions about policies? Because I can also highlight a few other things if not, but I want to give time to... And again, if you have questions, you can put them in the Slack, uh, or Slack, sorry, the chat. Um, or you can raise your hand and just unmute yourself and ask the question directly. Ah, excellent question. Uh, we have a question saying they, they noticed the iGEM login website has not been updated and any timeline as to when that will be. Um, so that has actually been a larger problem than we anticipated. So for this year, at least for this part of the year, we are going to continue using the old login system. It is our hope that we'll be able to transition to an updated login system throughout the season. Um, but it is, as one can imagine, many thousands of users in our database. It's just a little complicated. Um, so yes, currently all the login is through old.ijub.org. Um, another great question. Are there any policies regarding teams interested in following a project as a startup? Um, there are no policies uh, directly about that, but we have uh, an entire group, an entire program that can help you through that process. Um, and so if you look at the very top of our website, we have the various um, names here. We have competition, projects, community. And if you go over to startups, if it wants to load for me, um, you can actually connect there with the folks uh, in Epic, which is our entrepreneurship program innovation community, who can help you with that process and help you understand the process. And they'll also be uh, great. So uh, Vasiliki is here. And so at the, towards the end of today, uh, we'll also have a, set, a short session about iGEM Epic and how you can be involved. Uh, another good question. Uh, microalgae count as a hazardous organism if they are toxic? Most likely, yes, but I am not a safety expert. Um, so for safety questions, I would say if you want to re-ask that question during the safety session today, that would be fantastic. Otherwise, um, we can also ask the safety committee. So you can also just send that email to send that by email to safety at igem.org. Um, but yes, I am not a safety expert. I am openly <laughs> not that person. <laughs> uh, but that's a really good question. But if it's if if there's any sort of toxicity, um, generally speaking, we do ask that you still have to submit a check-in form if they're not on that whitelist. Um, and so we have a whitelist policy here. Um, and so if the organism's not listed there, meaning it's not considered automatically safe, then we do ask that you do a check-in form for any organisms that you're working with. Okay, we are ready to, I think, to move on to the next competition topic, but these have been really good questions, is understanding the competition deliverables. 